these guys that are doing this, or were doing it, were not into it because they saw a Food Network show and the romanticism that everybody wants to be a pit master. Now, this was straight up economic. This is how I can make more money for my family. Like barbecue in the South is, is peasant food. People, both rich and poor, think that barbecue is supposed to be cheap. You got guys charging $3.50 for a sandwich that he cooked. He spent 24 hours cooking. It's got a 33% yield. It's like the stupidest economic model you could do in food is cooking barbecue and it's the cheapest. I think there are only 20, low 20s spots in America still cooking whole hog and uh, there's only three left in the state cooking it every day. The whole hog we cook is typical to the style of West Tennessee. Uh, whole hog barbecue in general is very nuanced in the sense that with whole hog you're cooking a body. So the, the smoke flavor is very subtle. As this hog is cooking, there's three primals to it. You've got the shoulders, you've got the belly, and you've got the hams. The hams are very lean in both terms of collagen and fat, and they're, they're very dense. So we always drag these hams. These hams are always the last thing to get done on a hog. The belly gets done first. It's the opposite of the hams, obviously. It's tons of collagen, tons of fat, uh, and then the shoulder is like perfectly balanced. So what ends up happening is, is that we end up having to keep the belly and the shoulder from overcooking while we're getting the hams done. That's what makes whole hog barbecue so um, hard and skill driven really. Um, it's not hard on paper, but it's one of those things you got to do it a few thousand times to really get it down, you know. So what happens is back to the flavor profile is we're waiting on these hams to get done. This belly and a lot of the shoulder is sitting in its own fat, so it's a confit. And that's the silkiness that's on your palate that a lot of people confuse with fat. And it's not, it's the, it's the gelatinous stickiness of the collagen that's melted down with it. Because I've got very lean meat here, very fatty meat here, I always want these two married together. I have balance in my shoulders. Where you really get sideways in barbecue, the number one mistake everybody makes is, is temperature spikes. Collagen does not like that, muscle fibers don't like that. They're like a big sponge. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to make that collagen cry uncle and you know, give up the fight, so to speak, and then it turns gelatinous. We want a very low, consistent temperature, 20 degree window max variance. And we're just gonna just slowly, like it's almost like in a boxing match, I'm just gonna jab you into submission. When we put these hogs on, I cook at 250-ish for six hours and the hog is, you know, cavity down. When I flip it, I cook it for another 16 to 18 hours at 190 to 200 degrees. So I give them a metric. I say I want it 200 degrees, gets to 190, put a half a shovel in. You know, it's just half shovel at a time. Just so I don't have this going. There's so much about barbecue, authentic barbecue, that is about feel. As you see, there's no temp gauges in there. And you can see these hand marks. I want my guys to feel the pit. If I took all their temp gauges away, I still want them to cook a hog in 24 hours, and it'd be money. There are differences in the way we do it in West Tennessee and the way it's done in the Carolinas. In the Carolinas, they cook um, what we consider like well, hogs smaller than ours. They cook hogs in the 140, 150 range. Uh, they chop and mince, fold their uh, flavor profiles in with it. And the biggest thing, which I actually love, is they crisp the skins up and chop the skins in with the meat. They use a lot of oak over there because the best wood that you can use is the wood that's local to you. The West Tennessee style is larger hogs, 180 to 200 pounds. We cook for 24 hours, uh, we use hickory, and we pull our meat and serve it what we call naked, uh, meaning that we don't have anything on it uh, until you uh, uh, doctor it how you want to and you order it and get home or get to the table. So I only want my guys pulling what they can sell. I don't want them pulling the whole hog because once you pull barbecue or once you slice it, whatever you're gonna do, a clock goes off and it just starts the quality just starts going down, 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 down. What it is is on paper, none of this is really that hard if I gave you a procedure to do it. But you're gonna burn some of them up and you're gonna catch some on fire and you're not gonna get some of them done. And that just comes with reps. You know, you just have to boom, boom. You gotta hammer out a bunch of them. So I make my guys go through basically an apprenticeship program and they have to work at a minimum of six months in the pits. And usually it ends up being probably on average about a year and a half. The biggest challenge is uh, getting young, the overnight guys, the younger kind of apprentices to stay focused. 
they have to have really good time management skills because they're not just sitting around here playing Fortnite on their iPhone while they're waiting to fire the coals again. They're out all night because we load ribs and chickens three times a day and those cook for six hours. So it's staged to come off so I run out at lunch, I run out during the through, I run out at the end of the night at supper. So how I grow is, is that the guys who put in the time, they're consistent, they're good, they have passion. I go open up another location and put them in it. If they take several steps past that and become get into a managerial role and start managing the restaurant, I want to make them a partner. So there's like a growth plan for these guys to get somewhere in their career. Um, or they go open up their own place, which is great too. Uh, our palate has been raised significantly since the 80s. And people are slowly becoming accustomed to being okay with paying a premium price for something that they cannot make at home or they can't just find anywhere down the street. But it's just like everything else, man. I don't care if you're in the hamburger business, you're in the pizza business, you're in the barbecue business. All those businesses, those spaces we call them, are crowded. There are very few of them, though, who are have set their standards up. I want to put out a 10 every day. We'll put out a 9, maybe an 8 on a bad day, but we're going to be in that 8 to 9 range. Our diet will change over the next 50 to 100 years to being a more plant-based diet, there's no question, but you're never not going to want to eat a good whole hog sandwich.